hand the conference over to Mr. Vikas Jadav, Head Investor Relations, Villa Soft Limited. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Jadav. Yeah, thanks, Tara. So good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us on a Friday evening earnings call discussion. Uh, so I'm Vikas from Investor Relations, and joining us today on the call we have uh, CEO and MD Dharmendra Kapoor, DK, CFO Chandrasekhar Thyagarajan, uh, Chandru. Roop Singh, our Chief Business Officer, uh, Shri Rangnath Kulkarni, SK, our Chief uh, Delivery Officer, and uh, Arun Rao, who is our Chief People Officer. Please note that anything which we say and which refers to the outlook uh, for the future is a forward-looking statement and must be read in conjunction with the disclaimer, which is there in our investor update, uh, which has been uh, uploaded and sent to the exchanges. I will now hand over the call to DK. Over to you, DK. Thank you, Vikas. Is my voice clear? Yes, DK. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, dear all, uh, good evening. And welcome to the last of Water 4 Financial Year 21 earning call. Uh, let me begin by spending a minute on the situation and challenges that each one of us is experiencing at global level in India and around each and every sphere of ecosystem around us. The pandemic year has been a tough time for all of us in more than one way. The pandemic impacted financial year gone by has been one of the most challenging for all the global citizens. Many of us and our near and dear ones got infected. Most of them recovered while we lost a few unfortunate ones. While today we look back at our performance for the year with a lot of satisfaction, it could not have happened without contribution from each one of them who fought during this time and kept the show alive for our clients and shareholders. I would also like to acknowledge and appreciate the support of all our stakeholders in this fight on this pandemic. Sincere thanks to each one of you for your significant contribution and support. As they say, the show must go on. Let me narrate our performance for the year and quarter four. Coming to the financial performance, we just completed our second year of operations after the merger. And I'm very pleased that in a COVID impacted year, we were able to report growth across all the key parameters. Financial year 21 revenue was at 480 million and saw a growth of 3.4% year on year. We delivered 15% EBITDA margin, 14.9% to be precise, an improvement of 300 BPS year on year. The profit after tax was up 37.1% year on year and stood at 43.4 million. The quarter revenue was at $123.3 million a quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 3.2%, EBITDA margin at 16.9% versus 16.4% in quarter three. And this was despite an impact of wage hike. Profit after tax was at $13.5 million, up by 3.4% quarter-on-quarter and 41.4% year-on-year. A major achievement in the year which would seem counterintuitive, especially with 45% ERP business for us, was the TCV deal wins amounting to $888 million, which was up 32.7% year on year. About 50% of these deals are new, and other 50% are the renewals. Almost 90% of the total deal wins came from our existing clients in the quarter four and financial year both, which reflects the strong cross-sell that we did and have been talking about this since the merger. The COVID environment acted as a catalyst for us in our transformation journey, and we were able to improve and share annuity business from 60% at the beginning of the year to little over 70% by end of the fiscal. 
the increase in NOP also is reflected in the share of business from fixed price projects, which has gone up from 47.5% to 60.5% in the quarter four financial year 21, which is 13% movement in one year, which is quite significant. Offshore revenue contribution also improved during this time from 41.1% in quarter four previous year to 46.1% ending quarter this financial year. As we updated in our previous quarterly calls, we worked on pruning our tail accounts that were non strategic for us. These were very small and with potential of not much future growth. That exercise had been completed in quarter three, and today we have very stable clients' portfolio. Our active customer count stands at 291 as on 31st March 21. The growth rate in our top customer uh, customers also reflects the strategy of focus on our key customers. Top 5, top 10, and top 20 customers grew 21.2%, 19.8%, and 19.3% respectively during the year. While the growth from outside top 20 customers saw a little decline, on year on year basis. But that provides us a good confidence that our relationships with our key clients are becoming deeper and much more stronger. And that would mean that going forward, if we continue to show that level of growth with our top clients, the growth for us is going to come much, much easier. And that makes us far more optimistic for coming here. While the reported growth in financial year 21, our employee cost as a percentage of revenue came down from 60.7% to 59.5% in financial year 20, a drop of about 1.2% year on year. This was possible due to our effort to further broaden the pyramid as we continue to induct freshers and continue to strengthen our learning and development so that we focus on developing the talent inside and not always depend upon hiring from the outside. And that strategy has started showing the result. And that means that we will continue to show the uptick in the profitability that we have shown in the previous few quarters. Our utilization improved from 80.9% in quarter four, uh, previous financial year to 82.8% percent in quarter four financial year 21. The health of the balance sheet, balance sheet continues to improve. Uh, as you all may remember that our DSO was 72 days when we entered the year. It stands at 56 days in March 2021, which is lowest till date and probably best in class. Also, our cash and cash equivalents have gone up by $64.7 million or 450, 450 crores during the year. And that also is very, very significant contribution in the business. Our attrition stands at 11.6% versus 18.9% a year ago. So that brings the stability in our teams and, and, and hence our ability to deliver has become much better to our clients. We have uh, uh, 11,051 professionals as of 31st March 21, which is an addition of 783 professionals during the year. We consolidated our position by making structural changes in our organizational fabric and business strategy, thus preparing the course for accelerated growth. Over these two years, since the merger, we have steadily built a reputation for being a formidable player in the market with our strong enterprise solutions as well as digital capabilities. As a testimony to our growing brand, we have received several accolades and awards from being recognized as India's most admired and valuable power brand company 2020. Two, winning the Aegis Graham Bell Award for our entirely open solution that we built very, very quickly during the pandemic year. And 
were able to start earning revenue by selling it to some of our key clients. We also got Manufacturing Leadership Partner Award, Sabera 2020 Award for our community benefit initiatives in the Project Shodhan to be featured in the Global IRG Index across category for three times. If you look at the growth levers, we have sharpened our business capabilities by defining and building a micro vertical strategy. I have spoken about micro vertical strategy in the last three quarters that how that is going to shape up the future for the organization so that we are able to deliver much better than in those micro verticals than the larger players. And that strategy has really worked very well for us and that has empowered us to grow at a faster pace than the rest of our main verticals. And that would mean that earlier, if we focus on two micro verticals, the newer strategy will have four micro verticals so that we continue to build more deeper capabilities rather than trying to spread thin across multiple verticals. Investments have been made in the right talent and partnership to build our horizontal levers, such as cloud migration, IoT and industry 4.0 adoption, data analytics and blockchain. So that clearly shows that how we have started building the horizontal capabilities on top of the strong enterprise solution capabilities that we always have had. And that these important investments will also drive our company's prospect and position us to grow and prosper. Some of the wins that we would we have seen in the previous quarter, which is quarter four, as well as what we continue to see is coming because we have started strengthening our horizontals in a big way in core capabilities so that we continue to deliver value to our clients in a way that they get best rate of return or best, best return on their investments when they are working with their Luxoft. Going forward, our priorities will be as follows. Number one, our focus on platform-based digital initiatives, cloud adoption, and aggressive automation will be our key growth levers. Uh, I have spoken about platform-based digital initiatives in the last couple of quarters as to how it has started giving us newer wins. Our growing relationships and partnerships with platform providers is helping us structure the transformational multi-services and long-term deals. We will continue to make strategic investments to develop platforms for core industry processes of our clients where the need for digitalization is much higher and we can offer them the sanitization model to enable an outcome-based and faster transformation. We will also continue to focus on our top accounts to cross-sell and persevere to increase our NOT business. These had been the two core pillars of our strategy in the last two years, where we focus on the cross-selling on the top accounts. Going forward, we have identified, identified top 30 accounts. That is going to be our major focus so that maximum growth comes from our select list of customers in creating the deeper relationship with them and creating the deals that are going to be much longer term, multi-services, and the size is bigger than before. By leveraging, by leveraging on outcome-based deal constructs, and build capabilities across verticals, we aim to build and grow a very healthy pipeline. In fact, if you look at our pipeline, our pipeline in the last one year has grown from $600 million to approximately $1.2 million already. And we continue to incentivize our sales team, continue to focus on building the pipeline and also improve our winning ratio so that the growth becomes a sustainable feature for us. And today, by looking at our exit rate with the quarter four, I am becoming very, very optimistic and confident for the upcoming year, the growth that we will get.
at the same time as i talked about uh, the operational rigor will always be a focus for us uh, uh, we have continued improving our profitability over last seven quarters every quarter we have looked at the specific area that we need to improve upon whether it is with respect to the way we deliver or the way we sell or the way we operate our operations and every single aspect that we continue to look at and continue to bring the operational rigor so that we are a very very efficient company when it comes to the execution and that i am very very confident that we will continue to provide uh, a very good result from the profitability perspective going forward as well finally in a year that was full of unpredictable events and expectations we are exiting the financial year at a very high note and baseline of growth and profitability this makes me extremely optimistic in setting the stage for robust performance for upcoming next financial year 22 let me now hand over the discussion over to our cfo chandru to provide more perspective on numbers over to you chandru uh, thank you dk i hope everybody can hear me uh, clearly good evening to you all uh, i do hope that you're staying safe and are taking care of your loved ones too uh, let me give you some more detail on the financials that uh, dk spoke about our q4 uh, revenue was at 123.3 million and this was rupees 902.9 crores uh, in inr and this this represented a growth of 3.2% on a quarter on quarter basis uh, q4 had a cross currency benefit of about 20 basis points and hence the constant currency revenue, revenue growth was at 3% q4 EBITDA was at 20.8 million dollars and that's 152.4 crores versus 19.6 million dollars in q3 and this represents a growth of 6.2% quarter to quarter and 28.8% on a year to year basis the year to year improvement in uh, in rupee terms was 30.5% ebitda margins to that 16.9% and this is an improvement of about 48 basis points in a quarter quarter basis and 401 points year to year q4 ebitda margin improved despite the full impact of wage hikes that uh, we had given effect to for january 2021 our improvement in ebitda margin was aided by revenue growth primarily uh, about 0.8 points uh, lower uh, bad debt provisions in q4 about 1% there were no furloughs and of course uh, higher billing days in q4 that helped uh, 1.5% uh, there was an impact as i spoke about uh, the wage hike which was about 2% uh, and a higher recruitment cost given that we hired about 652 uh, employees in the fourth quarter our profit after tax for q4 was at 13.5 million dollars uh, 99 crores roughly versus 13.1 million dollars in q3 this represents a growth of 3.4% quarter on quarter and 2.7% in uh, in rupee terms and on a year to year basis the growth was 41.4% the effective tax rate was lower at 27.7% in q4 versus 29.5% in q3 uh you'll be aware that uh, we had taken the decision to move to the new tax regime in uh, FY21 and this decision was taken in the third quarter last year coming to the full year numbers revenue was at 479.6 million dollars rupees 3556 crores and uh, this means a growth of 3.4% year to year in rupee terms that was 8% year to year uh, fy21 cross currency tailwind of about 20 basis points and hence the revenue growth in constant currency terms was at 3.2% fy21 had a rupee depreciation of about 4.5% against the us dollar which is why the rupee growth you can see is higher than the growth in dollar terms the full year ebitda was at 71.5 million dollars versus 55.3 million dollars 
this means growth of 29.4% year to year, 35% in rupee terms. Margin saw an improvement of 300 basis points during the year. Uh, factors that led to uh, EBITDA expansion, I spoke about uh, the Q4 uh, uh, factors. Uh, just to add to that, we had uh, a significant improvement in our utilization of our build resources. We had a lower bench. We also optimized our GNA uh, spending, and all of this uh, together gave us about 1.5% of increase. Uh, there was reduced travel uh, because of the pandemic and that uh, benefited us by about 2%. We had uh, better forex rates and uh, you know that was about 1.3% of improvement. There were lower maintenance costs and renegotiation that we did uh, with our subcontractor vendors, all of which uh, you know have helped us close to about two points. Uh, margin did have an impact due to higher cost of service delivery, uh, you know that, that again comes uh, from from the increase in revenue plus our uh, you know uh, our dynamic uh, on sort of offshore mix and that was about 3.2 percent. We had wage hikes and also there were some one time one time discounts that we had provided back in FY21. Our other income was lowered in the year and this was primarily because while we did have uh, gain from our forex hedges. We saw our mark-to-market uh, uh, losses uh, going up because of the evaluation of our debtors um, in relation to the foreign exchange movements. Uh, the FI21 PAT was at 43.4 million, which is 321 crores approximately, and was up by 37.1% year-on-year. In rupee terms, that was 43% uh, year-on-year. The year in cash and uh, DK spoke about uh, the increase that we did uh, in our uh, in our cash. Year in cash and cash equivalent stood at 153.1 million dollars. That's 1,119 crores uh, against 88.4 million dollars as at March 31st, 2020, and uh, and this meant an increase of 64.7 million dollars on a full year basis. Revenue growth, margin improvement, lower tax rate, and significant improvement in our cash collection and therefore our DSO has led to this improved cash balance. Considering a healthy cash balance despite the COVID crisis, the board has announced a final dividend of two rupees fifty pesa per share per share, over and above the interim dividend of rupees one per share, which we had announced back in second quarter of the five twenty one. The total dividend for the year, therefore, was three rupees fifty pesa per share for FY21, and that makes our pay- payout ratio at 30.2 percent, which is 27.2 percent in FY20. Our capex spend in FY21 was about 3.5 million, and uh, our free cash flow for the year was at 80.5 million, which was 185 percent of our net income. In conclusion, this year has been phenomenal for us so far as improvement in the financial metrics is concerned, and we will keep working hard to maintain it. While we saw some benefits from costs like travel, facility management, etc., in FI21, we are keeping a tight control on all cost line items and are critically evaluating efficiencies at the operational level to hold on to our full year margin. With this, let me throw the floor open for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Sandeep. From Edelweiss, please go ahead. The line for the participant drop, you won't the next participant. Next question is from the line of Shraddha from AMSEC. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, congratulations to the management team on the great project. Um, so I just want to interrupt you. We are not able to hear you properly. Can you hear me now? Yes, better than. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so congratulations to the management team on a great quarter. Um, so the first question is uh, very solid deal wins in the quarter. So was this uh, led by a single shot large deal like we had uh, during the inward care time in third quarter 20 or is it more of, you know, uh, mid-sized deals getting bunched up together? So any, any uh, you know, uh, light on the largest deal that you have won this quarter in terms of its size and how does the pipeline look like now that uh, we have had this got deep conversion with this quarter? So, uh, so you know, some some outlook there would be helpful. Um, thanks, Radha. You know, uh, absolutely. I think uh, uh, no, there is no Invacare kind of deal uh, as large as Invacare, but there are deals which are mid-size deals that have happened during the quarter, and uh, that uh, is, in my opinion, very encouraging because some of the deals that may look today to be $15 million a year deal is actually, if you look at the TCV, it has a potential of at least becoming four or five times the size that may appear today because the nature of the deals have really changed very much. And, and these have started becoming the series of mid-size deals rather than one large size deal. So, so there are significant uh, number of deals that are there. The largest deal that happened during this year, the size was approximately $38 million, okay? But there are other deals which are in the size of about $15 million, $20 million deals that have happened. All right. And how does the pipeline look like? You did indicate that the pipeline has now moved up to a, a $1.2 billion kind of a pipeline of, you know, up from $600 million a year back. So, so any color on the pipeline as to from which vertical, which service line? Because if I look at your how the staff offering has moved, staff business has been down significantly this year. So what does the pipeline indicate in terms of any pickup in staff implementation kind of work? If I go by the percentage wise, your SAP probably may have a higher percentage than the other. Because what is happening is that uh, the projects, those were stopped last year because of pandemic, those have started coming back. The clients have started coming back and started taking up those projects. So, so from the pipeline perspective, the percentage on my SAP might be higher. But the good part is that it is across. Uh, uh, of course, it is led by the digital uh, deals more and more now because the kind of deals that are there on the full stack platform, they are the ones who are becoming more and more significant for us. And that does involve sometimes the ERP deal as well as part of that. So, so, the, so the big shift that has happened for Birla Shop in the last two years is that the deals are now more and more multi-services deals rather than single service deals. So there is hardly any deal that we can call that this is just an ERP deal. There might be some, uh, the smaller one, but, but there is a deal which is ERP is coming along with the data and analytics and creating a customer experience layer on top of that and also implementing their e-commerce along with that. So the deal size is becoming much bigger and it is not only about ERP, it is also the surround technology that we have to implement for a particular client. So, so such a deal, in my opinion, are much more broad based now and much more digital in nature, even when ERP is a core part of that deal. All right, so that's helpful. And uh, one last question, now that we are exiting the year on such a high deal TCV note, so how confident are we? I mean, we've already always sounded out that, you know, we would be doing double-digit growth in FY22, but any, any uh, you know, quantitative direction, whether that number would be 12, 13% or it would be 50, it could be 15% plus now, given that uh, this quarter was a record. Correct. No, absolutely, absolutely, because, uh, you know, I was actually trying to reflect on uh, our own result in the uh, in the uh, uh, quarter four and uh, the way our annuity revenue has improved. Okay, the dependence on the project based revenue has come down significantly. So I have been reflecting on that. That if 
becoming a billion dollar was a dream three quarters back it was an aspiration two quarters back today it is looking a very good reality to me okay i am very very optimistic about financial year 22 now and i am i am absolutely very very happy we don't give the guidance as policy but but i am far more optimistic today than i was one or two quarters back uh, because the parameters or the fundamental changes that we wanted to build in the organization that has happened i was i was very happy the year we were improving our annual revenue but that if we will be able to touch and go above 70% it was still a question mark but we have been able to achieve that at the same time 20% growth coming from my top 20 customers is something that is a reality now because that is what uh, we achieved significant improvement in so now that we are picking up the top 30 accounts and if we grow 20% on those there is no reason why we will not have a very very handsome growth in financial year 22 now i am very optimistic sure sir sure great and wish you all the best for the next financial year thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sandeep agarwal from middlewise please go ahead yeah thanks uh, good evening to the whole management team and you know wish you every every one of you good health so dikya i will ask one question to you one to rook singh and one to chandru so i will start with my question on dk that to you first uh, so dk uh, all the problems which were there you know in, the, in our business model two years back you have very nicely and very consistently you know completely solved all those problems and now i i don't find any reason in fact why you know erp even should be seen negatively because erp is the con- gives you the complete control on the client ecosystem so you know all these new technologies you get more advantage to implement in those scenarios so my my question to you is that why we are also you know like uh, so kg about you know uh, acknowledging that we have turned around all our problems in a very very big way and very quick way and acknowledging that you know the coming years will be much much better i know your billion dollar number and all but why this you know such a open ended guidance of a just double digit guidance uh, so you know it looks like more like you know all the bank companies where they are consistently for last few quarters under guiding so badly like you know if amazon is beating its revenue estimates by 7 10 billion dollars a quarter i don't know whether it is a good thing or a bad thing so we are also you know somehow unfortunately uh, a kind of guiding in that way in you know, an open ended way so what is the reason behind that are you scared of something or is it is it is normal way you want to you know guide so that is to you and then i have a question which is from roop which is that you know uh, roop do you see that you know this uh, this restrictions which are still there in in the consultancy space for people to travel is that really impacting in a big way the cloud implementation part and the because when we speak to technologists in the us they are saying that the travel should open up for the the, the services revenue to uh, move up uh, make a big move so you agree with that or you think that you know uh, it is not necessarily impacted to that extent and finally to chandru what what, what should we build in our tax set because now you are shifted to new regime so how should we project our, our tax set for next couple of years so thanks that's all from my side and wish you best of luck for next quarter yeah no no perfect thank you very much very quickly you asked absolutely the right three questions Uh, first of all um, are we scared of anything absolutely not uh, and i'm very happy that you acknowledge that we have taken those problems that come with the merger and acquisition and we have been able to solve one by one because that had been my uh, a single focus in ensuring that we become a company which is having very sustainable performance okay so that so that that we have been able to achieve i'm also very happy that you said that when we have a stronger presence in erp we have a good grip on the core of it for our clients and that is absolutely true and the good part is that that erp is becoming very very digital in nature because erp is migrating to the cloud in many cases ERP is becoming digital. It is connecting with the best of breed solution. So that is giving us so much of leverage because when we understand the core very well, it becomes far more easier for going and helping our clients. Now, when it comes to the guidance, I tell you, we are not 
we have taken that policy in the last two years that until we become very very confident about the sustainability of our revenue and we start delivering always better than that we commit we will come back and actually change our policy so it is a matter of only policy not that we want to shy away from giving it because essentially internally we have to work against certain goals and we have to continue to beat our goals also and even if you look at in the last six quarters there would never have been a case where we would have said that this is what we will deliver and we would have delivered better than that we would have always delivered better than that and we want to continue to remain like that in the short term before we change the policy before we become very very confident that now our numbers are all very predictable numbers because if you look at our integration on the it side is just about four months okay now that we have all the internal controls in place the numbers are there in place the guidance has started happening and everything we are far more confident and that the reason i said that what looked like a dream three quarters back today to me it looks big reality that we will be a billion dollar you can very easily compute back for four years that if i had to become a billion dollar what should be my guidance and i can only tell you that we have already defined our guidance quarterly annually keeping all that in mind so that means that we definitely will grow better than many of the expectations that you all will have but as a policy right now we do not give the guidance so please excuse me for that but i really hope that in a quarter or two quarter time we start coming back and change our policy of sharing the guidance up front also thank you yeah and Roop, I, i know i think there was a question that roop uh, roop and uh, uh, chandru also had yeah. to answer yeah yeah yeah, yeah so sandeep uh, uh, sandeep thank you for the question and good evening so sandeep from uh, you know the last 14 months uh, with the with the covid crisis has provided the flexibility where you can actually engage with clients on a virtual basis and you know with the travel restrictions opening up further as as we go along and as we meet clients more i think the two models will continue to coexist uh, especially in the next you know in the near future i would say at least this year right so from from our perspective i think the customers are now more flexible uh, more willing to have the virtual conversations uh, and and they tend to get to know you through the discussions of what you see the reference that you have in the market so as we open up there will always be an, an improvement face to face is obviously always better but i don't see that impacting the potential growth that we can actually see coming out uh, during the year but it can always improve as we as we communicate with our customers face to face so so yeah. i'm um, sorry you know, yeah, let me take the third question yeah, sandeep sorry sorry um, sorry, uh, sandeep i have i have a, i have a counter question to that to roop sorry roop sure, yeah. i i get that point of yours there is no 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 problem in that uh, but but my my what i was trying to understand is that uh, uh the the uh, uh the point you mentioned and if you listen to what you know the the global consultants are talking about whether it is kpmg deloitte or you know accenture ceo they are saying that you know uh, we will not allow our people to travel till there is a health risk and and, and that that is what they made mention in march and and i when i speak to people in the us in the technology space they are also saying the same thing and they are saying that you know there is a huge amount of demand and that demand need uh, some kind of physical as you rightly mentioned uh, presence uh, to to kick start those projects so i was just trying to understand is there such kind of pent up demand which is there uh, which is which is already there but it is got cut because of this travel restrictions or you don't think that any such kind of thing is existing so that was my actual question sorry yeah so we so you know there is there is always a benefit to be able to meet face to face and meet with customers and and further understand them you know not only on a on a on a work basis but personal basis right in terms of what makes them really evolve and take but i think the acceptance over the last 14 months has increased significantly with the virtual world as i said the benefit will always be there of meeting in person and and you know i think the thinking both from a customer side and also from the consultant consultant side right or consultants or service providers 
is that, you know, you don't want to put your employees at risk up front, right? You don't want to do that. So I think the acceptance level is much higher to work in a virtual world at this point in time. But I think that will evolve over the next uh, six to nine months, depending on location, depending on country. But yeah, I think the travel may open up. Yeah, the travel may open up a lot for the sales teams, whereas the technical people uh, may still continue to work remotely because client also understand the dependency on them, and they also do not want to take any undue risk just so that they travel and they get sick. So, so clients are also very much willing to continue to work remotely with the technical teams. But I think sales teams will start traveling within US or within Europe. I think that will start happening very soon because they, both the countries are opening up in a very, very good way. Okay, and I have last from Chandru, so please answer that, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so your question, uh, Sandeep, was on the effective tax rate. Uh, like I said, uh, we moved from 33.3% uh, in in uh, FY20 down to 29.5% in FY21. I expect that it will steady to between uh, 28 and 29% on a go-forward basis, Sandeep. Okay, thanks. That's great. And thanks for taking my long questions. Uh, thanks to the whole team. Uh, be safe and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain from Anand Rati. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, three questions. One is on your on-site offshore mixer. So as you just mentioned in the previous question, the offshore part of technical delivery will continue to improve. For us, it is a little distorted currently versus the industry. So how much benefit do you guys think? Uh, and Porky saw some improvement towards offshore. But uh, do you think you can sustain this over the next few quarters and so. So that is question number one. Second, on the net new TCV side, is there something which is to do with seasonality or one large deal in the fourth quarter? Or should we expect this as a trend that gradually our average TCV is sort of moving up at a very fast pace? And the third is on the M&A side, any update? Because payout seems to be low compared to the cash that you guys have generated. So what should we expect in terms of M&A over, let's say, whatever visibility you have next two, three quarters? Yeah, um, our offshore onshore mix, I think, will continue to change for us because, as we answered in the previous question, also that the clients are far more willing to work with the talent wherever it exists, and uh, uh, and also now that we have implemented certain technologies in which the virtual teams can work together along with client, so that has started becoming much much easier. Uh, so from that perspective, in my opinion, the offshore mix will improve or continue to improve as we move forward. That is one shift that will continue to happen. And then we are, we are well covered on that because it does provide us also the advantage of being able to create the talent through our internal uh, learning and development approaches also. Okay, so that is one thing. Uh, uh, when it comes to the new wins, of course, this quarter is uh, far, far better than any other quarter. As I said earlier, that if we are able to have the TCV wins, which are going to be closer to $200 million, anything around $175, $200 million in a quarter, that is something that is we will always continue to gun for. And in my opinion, out of the four quarter, if we get two quarters which are higher than $200 million and two which are between around 175, I think then that would mean that we have a significant amount of wins for us so that we continue to see uh, a good growth for the upcoming years. So $800 million is the benchmark that now we have set for ourselves. We would like to always look at that, how do we get closer to that in every financial year? Because that is what then starts creating the baseline for higher and higher growth going forward. So that is the benchmark that now we are setting it for ourselves. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, sir. This is for net new, is it? No, no, no. It is a mix of both net new and the renewals. Okay, so my question was more on a net new. Like a net new is also seeing a bump up, like every alternate quarter kind of a thing. 
Uh, should we expect that as a trend, or do you think there is one particular deal which has contributed more to 4Q and then it will sort of get back no, to our? That is not one deal. It is across. It is across. There are multiple deals, uh, uh, which is what is giving us the confidence for the next financial year. Also, because if it is one deal, that would mean that it will be very few and very far. But when there are multiple deals of mid size, that means that there is a consistent way by which we are getting connected with our customers, and we are connected with the right set of deals that are coming up. So, so we are connected on the deals which are mid-size to little larger deals, and I think that gives us the confidence that it is a very sustainable feature of getting into those kind of deals going forward. Understood, sir. And third one was on M and A or payout. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Uh, on the payout, I think uh, this is going to be better than what we did last year, and our objective is that, of course, we. Continue to do that on the MMA side. Uh, uh, you know, as I said, that we are ready. But with MMA, we want to be uh, very clear with our strategy. That strategy is in place now. Uh, okay, uh, we will. Yeah, I am particularly not very keen on just going and acquiring anything. Okay, uh, for the purpose of just showing the growth alone. Because I want very significant growth coming in an organic way first, and I think we are there with that. Now with the MNA, we are looking at an opportunity. We are looking for a candidate which will be able to provide us at least two key features out of the three. I'm not going to narrate those three features that we are looking for. That is the uh, mandate that we have given it to some of the bankers to go and identify the candidates which. Can focus on certain industry, technology, and the client set. And out of that, if you are going to get two, then that would mean that uh, we will go after that candidate because we want to do larger one, and we want to do a very strategic one, so that it is going to lead to increase in the portfolio or the revenue that we currently have as part of our own uh, 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 revenue portfolio. But at the same time, whichever company that we acquire, we should be able to add value to their revenue also. So from that perspective, that is the candidate that we are looking for. But we are ready today with respect to doing any acquisition. Uh, and we already have clarity of mandate that we can go ahead. But there is not going to be any hurry in which we will do an acquisition. Sir, larger meaning like uh, is there a percentage to company size or how do you define uh, a larger one? Yeah, we expect that if we had to become a billion dollar, my inorganic growth as part of the billion dollar should be anything from 150 to 200 million dollar in revenues. In revenue, correct. Understood. Uh, and sir, last one on the million dollar accounts. There was this. There is no addition of the last few quarters. So this is reflecting account pruning, or do you think there is something more to it? No, uh, one million plus accounts. And, so, and what is the question on that? Uh, count was verified? count was coming off. So, is it because of the curtailment of tail accounts, or is it like the addition is right now slow and is likely to pick up? No, there is no. If it is a one million dollar account, that's not a tail account that we consider because we believe that that account can grow and uh, that is not going to be the part of the tail. Tail is a very very small account that we have really looked at. But otherwise, uh, we continue to grow those accounts. Uh, I didn't see any significant change on the $1 million account. Let me reflect on that data offline, and we can answer this question uh, even later also. I don't no, see no, anything uh, concerning on that front. Understood, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Line of Baidek Sarkar from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. DK, hi, good morning, and uh, trust the team's doing well. Congrats on a good, stable quarter. Uh, a couple of questions predominantly around the Oracle practice. Uh, Oracle has been very aggressive this past year, and the market share gains from SAP has been growing by the day, and it has products that are not worth a person. Why, why? I'm not sure if we are seeing that amount of traction in our portfolio, or am I missing something here? Because we've seen smaller vendors out of India piggyback on Oracle's traction very well. Uh, how should we understand how this has evolved, and uh, what should we look forward to here? 
I think we are seeing the same thing. Uh, uh, SAP, uh, Oracle has picked up some pace in the last uh, uh, one or two quarters because earlier they have been trying to find their feet on cloud. Okay. And now they have their strategy clear and they have started going after uh, the market that is there with either SAP or with other ERPs that they have to go start going after that also. I'm very happy that they started getting aggressive after that because we do get the advantage. And I'll explain what is the change that we have done in order to address that. Same is the case with SAP also because SAP is also getting very aggressive in order to really get into the S4 bandwagon and onto the cloud and also looking at expanding their portfolio into the e-commerce and other solutions. So, so both are coming with that. In my opinion, whenever those two giants are competing with each other, we always get the benefit. Okay, so so that is that is that is very uh, good for us. What we have done uh, in order to address that is that we have called out the channel sales and created that as a separate growth engine. Okay, uh, that was not the case earlier. It was part of the SAP, part of the Oracle. For, you know, those it was part of the practices that we were going after them. Now, what we've done is that we have a focused channel sales. There is a leader who leads that and is responsible for net new and winning the existing business, uh, winning the business from the existing clients wherever we have a relationship with OEMs such as Oracle and SAP. So what has started happening is that we have started taking that as a channel and started measuring our progress and growth in that direction also because there will be a special in that direction. Because what we realize is that slowly, we do not have to talk just about SAP. We do not have to just talk about Oracle uh, or JDE or for that matter, any solution. We need to look at this as an enterprise solutions category as one full category, because the interdependence of best of breed solutions has started becoming very critical. In a lot of time, you will end up actually having a core solution coming from Oracle, but many other enterprise solutions sitting on top of that that may not come from Oracle. And same is true for SAP or any other uh, cases. And that is the reason that the enterprise solution category should be seen as a one consolidated category. You will see that from next quarter, actually we will be reporting it according to that so that we see that as a comprehensive category we have a very comprehensive goal towards that. We have a leadership dedicated towards that. And we take that as an area of growth for us. So we are absolutely connected both with Oracle, SAP, Salesforce.com, ServiceNow. Okay, uh, with all other SaaS solutions, we are very closely connected and taking that as a channel sales now. Thanks, Vicky. Uh, so helpful. Uh, this is a repetition for Mohit's question for some more clarity. Given how the offshoring and the surprising contract matrix is evolving, should we assume that defending an EBIT margin of 15% is a given uh, path, of course, uh, starting Q1 and beyond? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. Uh, it is looking very uh, sustainable now, as uh, you know, everybody anticipated that when we will do the increments in the quarter uh, four, uh, it is going to go and drop. Now, we have further improved our EBITDA uh, 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 even after that. Uh, so I am pretty confident that, that we will continue to deliver uh, uh, a very sustainable uh, profit going forward also. There are other levers that we continue to work on, and it will continue to provide us more opportunity of improvement. Sure. Thanks, Vicky. Best wishes to the team. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on uh, great execution. A couple of questions and, um, uh, 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 you know, on the EBIT margin side. So just taking off from where Bedic left, uh, the 15% number we are talking of is EBIT number or we are talking of EBITDA number? Because I am asking EBITDA. 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 
okay perfect uh the second thing is uh, uh, uh you know maybe if cfo sir can uh, uh you know just repeat uh, the margin bridge uh, you know maybe the line was bad for me and i heard a reversal of provision in margin uh, of around 150 or 200 base just wanted to get a clarification and uh, also in the same uh, context uh, you know can, uh, can you also talk about uh, uh, the uh, was there any goodwill impairment uh, uh, you know in in the dna number and what is a sustainable uh, depreciation number that we should look for and uh, lastly on the tax rates um, you know our assumption earlier was that we'll go to 25% uh, we are guiding for 27% so you know any comments uh, there could be helpful yeah uh, abhishek thank you uh, i assume you're talking about the q4 ebitda bridge right um yes sir okay so um, i i talked about uh, five items basically uh you know on the on the upside one we had revenue growth helping up uh, helping us by about 0.8% uh lower bad debt provision by about 1% and higher billable days in q4 and uh, no furloughs in q4 was a q3 that was 1.5% there was a negative impact on account of margin uh, on account of wage hike that is 2.1% and incremental recruitment cost of about 0.5% coming from uh, hiring of 652 employees in the fourth quarter uh, that was your point on uh, yeah, what was your second question please the i think one the tax rate yeah yeah and the goodwill impairment and the goodwill impairment okay so there was no goodwill impairment uh, in in fy21 or in the fourth quarter so uh so there was no good in impairment so that was your question and you also asked about uh, the depreciation rate so uh, the the uh, fy21 was kind of um, you know a special year right so we did not invest much uh, uh you know in, in, even with that even uh, going forward uh, i i do not see that the depreciation rate will go up significantly in relation to uh to revenue in fact uh, you know we should see uh, the numbers kind of stabilizing uh, so uh, there was there was no extraordinary item in the depreciation either plus or minus uh the third one is on the uh, effective tax rate uh, i said 27 to 29% uh, uh, you know just uh, we should bear in mind that the 25.17% uh, rate only relates to india and as you know we have businesses across the world and therefore our effective tax rate is a function of uh, tax rates uh, from from the revenues and margins that we generate from across the world and that's why the number on a full year basis was 29.5% and should should steady at between 27 and 29% going forward uh that's helpful um uh, you know my apologies actually i'm just trying to understand on the goodwill amortization side um uh, you know so earlier we understand it was tax deductible so just wanted to get a perspective on that and uh, the second thing i also wanted to ask uh, dk uh, is that uh, you know if i look at the growth rate of uh, across our client metric uh, you know the non top 20 uh, have declined 13% on a yoy basis while the top 20 buckets uh, you know have seen a very uh, substantial uh, 18% average growth uh, now the question is within this decline of 13% how much of this was rationalization of clients and how much of is because of the project nature of the business uh, uh, you know where we have moved from a to almost 70% uh, and you know there could be some reversals uh, because of that yeah, very good question i think first of all uh, it was no rationalization of accounts in that category uh, uh, because wherever the uh payroll accounts have been cut those are very negligible okay uh, so i don't think that uh, there is any impact of that on our revenue uh it is, it is absolutely very very negligible uh wherever we have cut the payroll uh second uh, coming to the point that uh, uh you know uh, why decline in those accounts see if you look at 
this was a pandemic year okay the uh, cases in the uh, the energy and utilities sector went through tough time because of the oil prices okay the pharma companies now are really looking forward to spending more and more or the medical devices companies who are now spending more and more but if you look at the first uh, a, a few quarters they have had that as a challenge where they had to stop certain projects okay so that is that is the second impact that was there third is that yes we do have some part of our business which is project based business and when the project is finished we need to go and win newer business from the same clients in order for us to grow with them so as we are growing our ability revenue i think that problem is becoming smaller and smaller for us which is a very good news but the year was very special year because in this case we did find some of the projects getting stopped uh, for example one of the key client where we believe that we will be growing more than 50% this year has already brought in the project those who were stopped last year so projects have already started so if you look at that where the growth would have been much lesser in the previous year actually there was a decline of growth in the next in the previous year it is going to grow over 50% actually in the next two or three quarters itself so i think that is the change that has happened during this time because it was a very very different year uh, and very unpredictable year and that has resulted into such kind of situations also but the good part that we wanted to reflect was that despite having that kind of year at least the top lines have started uh, uh, you know have given the confidence to us that they can continue to grow with us and we can continue to deepen our relationship with them and that gives us the confidence that if we were focused on top 20 earlier now we should take at super sizing top 30 accounts because if we grow faster with them there is no reason why the growth at the overall portfolio level will not be better uh thanks sir and uh, uh you know chandra sir if you can just highlight uh, the goodwill amortization part uh, why the depreciation was lower uh, quarter on quarter just that could be helpful thank you for taking yeah. my question and best wishes for 22 yeah the goodwill amortization uh, uh piece we uh, you know from a from a statutory book perspective we do not have goodwill but uh, but as you know from a tax standpoint uh, we were eligible for uh, amortization of goodwill uh, so so there will be a small impact in our uh, effective tax rate on account of uh, you know the goodwill uh, amortization going away uh, effective uh, you know the financial year so uh, so there will be in my mind uh, there will be roughly about a point point 0.3 to point 0.4 basis point uh, you know or a 30 basis point uh, change on account of uh goodwill uh, depreciation going away right so uh, so i don't see that as a significant impact to our etrs uh thank you sir for taking my question thank you the next question is from the line of dipesh mehta from mk global please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for very strong execution a uh, couple of question uh, starting with first about the salary right now we have given this quarter so how we are looking for fy22 uh salary hike and how you are looking a bit of margin broadly you indicated around 15 percentage but considering utilization and some of the lever which you earlier alluded uh 15 percentage seems to be conservative so what kind of red win you are factoring into uh, next year margin widen second question is about the uh, vertical if you can provide some comment about vertical wise how you are seeing demand trend and geography wise us seems to be flat is this year large part of the growth this year driven by europe so if you can provide some perspective there how you expect vertical and geo to do third question is about the deal booking and other thing now considering the us is opening up and normalcy is returning to developed market do you expect uh, acceleration in deal booking to happen because uh, for us 5 to 7 percent is uh, revenue coming from new client kind of thing every year so if you can provide whether we are looking uh, significant acceleration because from exit perspective we have some headwind 
Q4V ended YOY negative. So if you can provide some perspective, thanks. So uh, thank you. Uh, I think on the EBITDA side, uh, 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 every single part of the EBITDA today that we have is very, very sustainable. Yes, there will be headwinds because uh, the talent war is there in front of every single company. Okay, and that is definitely going to, uh, you know, impact every single company in one way or another when the time for the increments comes to the next financial year. And uh, we have to continue to look at how will we go and neutralize that impact by continue to provide more and more efficiency in the other things. Okay. Uh, uh, and then there are multiple levers that are there. Uh, we have we have been optimizing our subcontractor costs. We have been optimizing on on-site offshore lakes and other things that are giving us the advantage also. Achandru did talk about uh, 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 some of the items on the margin improvement side. So, so, so I believe that definitely every company will have some headwinds when it comes to the cost of the resources uh, with respect to giving the increments, but I'm sure that we all are working on finding the levers in order to neutralize the impact that is going to be there so that we continue to keep it very, very sustainable habitat that we continue to deliver. Having said that, this is also going to be a time when we have to be very careful about what investments we make. Because the clients are now expecting that they will do the technology of adoption much, much faster than before. And that would mean that there will be a speed that will be required in which we can develop the talent. We can hire the talent. Okay, so all that will be required. So from that perspective, we have to be very open about what investments that we make in order for us to capture the higher growth than what we have been planning earlier. Okay, so that means that there is a little bit of a trade-off there might be required between the growth and the profitability. But having said that, that does not mean that uh, the profit is going to drop in a significant way. No, I think it is only the headwinds that we have to continue to focus on so that we, we can utilize them. Uh, uh, when it comes to the verticals and the geos, I believe uh, manufacturing has done very well for us and have started showing very consistent growth. At the same time, it is a very large vertical for us. We created a micro vertical within that, which we call as a high-tech micro vertical. And that high-tech micro vertical within the overall uh, vertical is going much, much faster for us. Uh, so that strategy will continue to give us good growth in manufacturing and in the life sciences, definitely. Energy and utilities, we have started improving because the oil prices started coming back and we are seeing that the clients have started taking the discussions, but it will still be a wait and watch for some more time. BSSI also is becoming on the bandwagon of digital adoption and everything. So I believe that we will continue to see more and more opportunities coming in the BSSI space also. But I believe that our growth will be led by manufacturing and life sciences definitely. Uh, Europe had been not as fast as we wanted it to be in the previous year because of that being pandemic year, no travel, no new relationship that we could build. Things have started opening up and we have also invested in the leadership in the Europe already. And we expect that Europe should give us significant footprint in this year so that it becomes a higher percentage of revenue in the overall scheme of things. That will be a, a geo kind of focus that uh, we will have. Last, I think you talked about the net new, uh, because for every company, the net new was not that great in the previous financial year. Uh, most of the people focus on the cross-selling uh, during the year so that we can leverage our existing relationship. The net new for us had always been 67%, but this year it had been just about 2%. So there is a delta of 3-4% that is there when things open up, that means that there's a much more significant net new growth that we can also aim for. And that would mean that it is going to help us grow faster than what we have been thinking about. And that is the reason I earlier said that I am very, very optimistic about the upcoming year. It is still open because how much travel will happen, how much clients will start meeting the sales team, it is yet to be seen. 
but things have started opening up in the US and Europe which is encouraging uh if i can squeeze last small question uh dikka because of the pandemic in india and severity of it are we seeing any delivery related or execution challenges which can impact q1 performance no i don't think that i see any issue with the q1 performance so far i haven't seen the issues with respect to we not being able to achieve our milestones or being able to deliver uh are there have been issues where people getting sick and not being available for a short period of time but we developed our backup strategy with respect to how do we utilize our talent across the different horizontals and the verticals so that they can develop whenever there are certain people who are sick at that point of time so so we took those actions very early on and that has Uh, had the same too during this time but we we had to remain very vigilant we had to remain very careful because it is we are still not out of it i know the uh, everybody is showing that the curve has started coming down and and it is positive but i don't think that we can take it very lightly because if there is a curve coming down on the on the uh, wave 2 there is also a talk of wave 3 that is happening so we have to remain very careful there are multiple programs that we have started in ensuring that how do we keep our employees safe uh, there are a lot of things that we have started on the employee care side also so that we can take care of them when they are delivering uh, whether it is on the medicine side doctor availability side or anything that is required for them to be safe there are multiple initiatives that we have taken we have already partnered for the vaccine side also so that we can vaccinate those people so i think we are doing all that that is required in order for us to ensure that we do not get too much of surprises in that direction little bit of surprise we have already factored in and we have the backup side be available for us understand thanks all the best all the best thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that will be the last question for today I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Dharmendra Kapoor for closing comments. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I know it was a late evening call for all of you, uh, uh, so thank you very much for joining and really participating wholeheartedly into the discussion. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, I, I, as I said, that the way we have exited quarter four, I am far more confident than before that. that our next financial year is going to be very very strong financial year and uh, and 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 we will continue to look at how do we deliver more than what we uh, set the expectations in the market uh, so that is going to remain as a focus for us uh, but at the same time i would uh, uh, you know uh, continue to provide continue to appreciate all the support that you have been giving us and would also like to uh i uh, wish that you all remain very very safe and remain very healthy so please take very good care of your health and a uh, good health for your uh, loved ones so that we continue to work on see the growth for our respective businesses thank you very much thank you on behalf of birla soft limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you Playback is complete.